So, folks, we are blown away by your generosity. Um, the first of which is just how many people came out to the uh, Zoom live stream that we did of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. It was just so we had so much fun doing it and it seemed like uh others really enjoyed it we will probably do another one soon and secondly and more importantly holy crap y'all donated eight hundred dollars worth of donations to the chicago food bank that's crazy that's nuts that's it's so nuts because our goal was a hundred ish yeah, right. Like, if we could get to three digits that we were like, okay, well, then maybe we can do this thing again. Yeah. And, and we're we, going to no matter what, but yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we will be doing another one. May not be Diner Strive and Dives, but maybe just an earnest uh, episode of something else. Um, but just, folks, we're just floored by your generosity. Is Really, there's nothing more to say other than, like, just thank you and thank you for for donating what you could if you didn't weren't able to donate that's totally fine too um, we hope but, you still tuned in because it was yes. just like really fun and it was nice to um i mean frankly it was nice to like do something that wasn't about the pandemic <laughs> right exactly exactly we like didn't talk about it <laughs> which was yeah. kind of nice uh and that i think is a real treat is to have just a little bit of time where we're not talking about it and if you missed it but want to watch it, it is up on our YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh, Being Earnest. Uh, I think we're just Being Earnest on YouTube. It might be Being Earnest Podcast. I am too you'll lazy find to it. look if it up If you try right hard now. enough, if you try hard enough, you'll find it. Look, there's another podcast that's up there that has something to do with Being Earnest. It's not that one. It's clearly not that one. You'll find our channel. You can watch it. You can laugh. You can live. You can love. All of the above. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you so much to everybody. We really, really appreciate it. You are all the very best. And we will be doing this again very soon. Um, if you have any suggestions of what shows you would like to see us do, um, send it on over to us because we would love to know. My yes. gut is saying chopped. I know, right? It feels it's like fun. it should be chopped. Oh, or like, a, what about like House Hunters? Oh, or Property Brothers? Well, they're my enemies. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. They're my nemesis. These. <laughs> we'll figure it out, and we'll, we'll figure it out. out but not the media. property brothers. Yeah. <laughs> if you could be anything, why not be earnest? Welcome to another mini-sode of Being Earnest, a very sincere podcast. Mini-sode. Pa boom boom. It sounds like Blue's Glues. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Paula, uh, what's our uh, mini topic going to be this week for Being Earnest, a very sincere podcast? Uh, can I give you a hint? Please. Okay. <laughs> Did that sound like a bird? That sounded a lot like a bird. It sounded like a seagull. <laughs> That's so impressive. Uh, our topic is birds this week, folks. <laughs> That's when something bad happens to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay um paula kid could, could you uh i'm josh this is paula we're the host Hi. Of <laughs> um, this is a mini sode uh because that's just what this is gonna be yes <laughs> okay paula i'd like you to do the bird impression but i'm gonna give you because you're such a great actor oh, and thanks. a bird impressionist i'd like to hear the, your bird impression but with different scenarios. So I'm going to give yeah. you some scenarios and I'd like you to give me the bird sound that, um, that goes with that scenario. Absolutely. All right. I feel so, really bad for my boyfriend who is just quietly playing video games in the other room and just can sometimes hear me just be like, <laughs> um, okay. This bird has just found $5 on the sidewalk. <laughs> this bird is just got invited to a party that they're not cool enough to go to, but, a fr but the other cool birds invited them and they're trying to like fit in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One more. Uh, this bird is 
actually upset about something that their friend said, but is trying to play it off like they're not upset. <laughs> well, it's kind of fitting because this is, I think this is our 52nd episode, which would make it like, I don't know. It's not actually a calendar year, but it's Happy 52 weeks. Anniversary, Josh. Thank you. You too. What did you get me? Um, I got you the opportunity to show off your amazing impressions. Thank you. And for you, I got a perfect bird impression. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is kind of fitting that like, this is, this is who we are now. Yeah. <laughs> We're just making sounds into microphones. But more Can importantly, make- thank you to everyone for listening for the last 52 weeks. Holy it's kind of crazy. Cow. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. amazing. I think we started recording this in my dining room. <laughs> and we moved <laughs> all the way into your guest room. <laughs> <laughs> you come a long way, baby. <laughs> um, so, Paula, I don't like birds. Get out of here. I don't like birds. They're tiny dinosaurs. No, that's what makes them cool. No, that's what makes them terrifying. They're little, like, grubby feet. The, like, little dinosaur feet. The way that they just look like... I would love those as my feet. I would love human hands and little bird feet. Little talons. (laughs) No one would mess with me anymore at the grocery store. If I had talons. (laughs) Um, I just, like... Birds always look like they are, and I don't mean this like existentially. I mean like they just look dirty all the time. You know mm. what I mean? Like dusty. Kind of mean. Uh, it. <laughs> maybe, but they're also dirty birds. You know what I mean? They're birds. Um, Josh, did you know I had a pet bird growing up? Oh, no, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, uh, uh, what was its name? Oli. Okay. What kind of was it? A talking bird? It was a cockatiel. Okay. And it could whistle a couple songs. Um, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> the day's greatest hits. <laughs> the day's greatest hits. That bird had a sad as hell life. We didn't have it for too long. We had it for probably about a year. Okay. And then we gave it to a friend. Um, I mean, it just like is a birds just like must be miserable, right? birds in captivity for sure because you've known the 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 truth of the skies you've known the truth of the skies you can see out the window at nighttime you have to put a little blanket over it over the cage they have like you you have to clip their little wings yeah it's very sad um and then occasionally you let the bird fly around and it just poops everywhere inside Mm. and bird poop reeks reeks and then it's also like how do you play with a bird? Do you know what I mean? Like we had, it had like little toys. Like we gave it the best little bird life we could, but like you can't, it's not like a dog where it wants to be with you. No, the like bird is person. playing with you and your emotions. Right. Not, you're not playing with the bird. Yes. But, uh, the, the family that we ended up giving the bird to, uh, let the bird sail around their house freely. The bird had like a mount Okay. And then where it could, you know, sleep and, and whatever, like that's where its food was. No cage. That bird just sailed around inside. Was this in Alaska? No, this was in Minnesota, but it does sound like an Alaskan thing, right? It's right. It feels like we're giving you the best life we can because you can't yeah. go outside. You know, I feel like my entire childhood was a parade of unusual pets. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium? Yes. <laughs> kind of situation? Uh, we had iguanas that would whip you with your t- their tail in your face. Okay. Uh, hamsters. We had some rabbits that I accidentally killed because I gave them a poisonous house plant. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was so small. Uh, and that's where your taste for blood started. That's where my taste for blood started. Yeah. Yeah. We had another attempt at a bird. We had a, you know, it's just briefly looked at getting a pet raccoon. What? Yeah, we didn't get it. I'm so disappointed we didn't get it. I don't like raccoons. <gasps> Josh, what what could you not like about a raccoon? It's tiny little human hands. Yes, the fact that it's an un <laughs> the fact that it's the uncanny valley between humans and 
beast that like this tiny little like they seem to know what you're thinking and they seem to be upset pa- listeners at home paula is making lots of little hand motions like she is a raccoon doing some kind of, doing the hand jive <laughs> that's what now, every raccoon's voice is now i would i do a perfect to- bird i do a perfect raccoon <laughs> i would go to a raccoon vaudeville show Oh, it feels uh, like they're made for that. Like a little player piano with the suspenders and the and the boater hat. Oh my God. I, Josh, I, I feel like maybe it is my soul's one, pur- like everyone's their life's purpose, right? Like some people like cure cancer and some of them are like, write a perfect Broadway show. And I think mine is to have a small pet raccoon who always sits on my shoulder. Yeah, I was thinking that the the sound of Madame Skaggs's raccoon circus had a real <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> Welcome to the raccoon circus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they do little little vaudeville activities, you know, like they kind of always doing little things. Then you come into my house and they're just running the show like I'm Snow White. Yeah, sure. No, they're just scrubbing dishes. I'm imagining you <laughs> instead of being me? instead of being like, oh, oh, you're just like, hey, um, 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 <laughs> come in. They all, they all show up. They all start beatboxing. I don't know. And we're best friends. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I, I am coming around to the idea of a, a, a tiny little raccoon, uh, with a, uh, you know, the like accountants. Uh, visor thing, the like green filtered light thing for an account. Yes. Just sitting there with being like, Paula, the books don't add up. <laughs> Run him again, Sam. <laughs> I always <laughs> smoke in this fantasy. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are different. I own, I own two dozen raccoons. <laughs> I wear a bathrobe everywhere and I smoke a pack a day. But also you have perfect eyesight. That part is also different. It's unrelated to anything else. <laughs> right, it's just also in this one, my favorite color is green. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, what if, what would your like uh, your dream pet be? Assuming, assuming there are, assuming we uh, Tiger King aside, ethics of this aside, mm-hmm. what pet would you want? Yeah, assuming that this pet would that I wasn't yes ethics aside and like me getting eaten aside. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. It's a good question. Well, I think it's right now, if if the reality is, you know, I am now stuck in quarantine with this pet, I think I would want like like an incredibly friendly like mini horse. <laughs> That you keep trying to ride on. Yeah, I keep trying to ride on. Well, I don't have a car. I haven't left my neighborhood in three to four weeks. When this is coming out, it'll be like a month and a half. I've only been like basically in our immediate neighborhood in the immediate like four mile radius from there. I'd like to be able to ride my tiny pony <laughs> over to Logan Square and socially distantly say hi to my friends, wave, and then pick up some groceries at Trader Joe's, which is just too far to walk. You would, you'd put on the saddle, you'd throw a leg over your mini horse and it would immediately buckle. (laughs) Because this thing's three feet, three and a half feet tall. I've lost a lot of weight during quarantine, but let's not. (laughs) Josh, you could flap this bottle of kombucha that I insist on drinking all the time on top of that horse's back and it would buckle under the weight. I also do like the idea of it just like being able to be like, I'm bored. I'm going to let this thing eat out of my hand. You know what I mean? Just a tiny little horse. I tried that with my cat. It does not work so well. What would your answer to this be? Raccoons. Got it. Okay. Dozens. Dozens. (laughs) <laughs> that's how you survive the apocalypse is being a yes. raccoon lady yes paula would you ride on a bird if it was big enough and could carry you josh there ain't a whole lot of things that if it was big enough and could carry me that i wouldn't <laughs> slap a saddle on and fly across the sky <laughs> or the road whatever <laughs> <laughs> i'm not picky yes absolutely i would ride a bird if it was big enough to carry me and i could control it 
I didn't say you could control it. I just oh, said you no, could no, ride it. Drop me off anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess would you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, this is not. Th- this is great comedy. Uh, let me ask this question then. Well, no, I have a. Have did you see? This reminds me of the iconic movie of the nineties, Thumbelina. Did you see it? I've never seen Thumbelina. Let me let me just let me paint a picture of Thumbelina for you, please. This is actually the most. Imp- I, this was my favorite favorite movie as a kid, which describes a lot about me. It is a knockoff Disney movie. It is like one of those movies that is supposed to look like Disney, but it is so messed up and it's not Disney. Mm. It is a story of a girl who is the size of a thumb. Mm -hmm. She goes on a lot of adventures. Sure. She gets engaged or she's set off to marry uh, a toad and an evil beetle before she uh, finds her true love a fairy, the king of the fairies. And spoiler alert. Of course. She's turned into a fairy. The music slaps. And also, <laughs> and also is written and performed by Barry Manilow. Really? Let me just confirm that. Yeah. Music by Barry Manilow. The whole movie is a perfect hot mess. Can I read you the list of who plays some of the voices in it? Please. It's starring the voices of blah, 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 Barbara Cook, Jodie Benson. Then this list rules. We have Carol Channing, Gilbert Godfrey. I love the idea that at the time that like Tarzan is coming out and they're like, hey, Disney, Disney's like, hey, Phil Collins, would you be willing to make, we're making this movie based on an old story. We're trying to revive the like, it's hand animated kind of thing. We'd like you to make a concept album for the soundtrack of this. And then Barry Manilow is like, that is what I want to do. That is exactly what I want to do. And Disney won't let me do it. I mean, this, the move, are you please, please, please. You have to watch the movie, Josh. It is so, it is so wild. <laughs> but the, the point of this is Giacomo the French ass bird carries Thumbelina around. Sure. So that's kind of how this comes back into bird. <laughs> Damn, she gets engaged to three guys, a toad, a mole, and a beetle. Does she get engaged or is she betrothed to them? Because how much agency does she have in this scenario? Kind of betrothed. <laughs> sure, Ooh. sure. Then it was like, you know, they didn't sell the same amount of merch that they would for like the good Disney movies. So it's mm. like you just could have like a scratchy nightgown and like a doll with like wonky hands, <laughs> a nose that's just to the side of its face. <laughs> so, Paula, the problem that we are running into here is that I am very pop culture. What's the word for it? Literate? Bad. But also bad at it that I haven't seen. I know a lot about it individual things but not like haven't seen them all another Mm -hmm. big piece of movie that is relevant to all of this that i have actually never seen in its entirety is the birds by the birds uh, by alfred hitchcock the birds i assume you've seen it i have seen the birds the premise of the birds is basically uh a town has thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of bloodthirsty birds descend upon it i don't like that at all because i as aforementioned i don't like birds would you say you're scared of birds Hmm. i am uncomfortable around birds i am scared of chickens i think this movie would push you into being scared of all birds (laughs) wonderful good i think you should see it why are you scared of chickens josh I think we've talked about this on the pod before, but I'm a grown man who's afraid of chickens because when I was in uh, not even elementary school, probably preschool uh, in California, my parents put me in like a little petting zoo pen where there happened to be some chickens um, and the rooster was totally fronting me the entire time and was like, I just did not like it. I felt very uncomfortable. They're like, they're weird and they're, I don't like the idea of being pecked. That sounds very painful and annoying to me. They're tiny little dinosaur feet. The like, 
Oh yeah, I just don't I like nothing about it. Mm. A good chicken is a dead chicken. Jesus. <laughs> well, then then kind of glazing past that, getting back getting back to the birds. Josh, what uh what other animals would you not like to see hundreds of thousands descend upon your town of? Mm. <laughs> Mm, good question. Tigers. Uh, Tigers. Imagine hundreds of. Picture this. Close your eyes. Mm-hmm. Open your eyes. Mm-hmm. Picture a town covered in chameleons. And you look outside. You can't because it wouldn't exist. You think about it. I mean, chameleons exist. No, but it would be camouflage. The entire okay, thing would like, be camouflage. You wouldn't be able to see the town. You would think it was going to be a normal day. Like in the birds, you would know where to avoid. You see the birds, but this, you would have no idea. And that's why I'm going to make a movie called The Chameleons. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a million dollar idea. I was thinking also that... um I mean, there's lots of kind of obvious answers like cockroaches or other kinds of insects and things like that. But I feel like it would just be really inconvenient to have just hundreds of thousands of salamanders in yeah, your town. I like that we're both thinking lizards. Yeah, for sure. Um, this really did open up a weird genre of horror movie, though, right? Like, there's so many horror movies about there just being a lot of an animal. <laughs> yeah, the scary thing is there's much. <laughs> what is that movie like a, there's several about spiders sure yeah snakes sure. on a plane is about too many snakes on a plane yeah right ours is chameleons in a town bears <laughs> yeah well i did go through a phase with some friends when snakes on a plane came out trying to come up with the funniest different titles for a movie that are animal on a mode of transportation so like Bears on a blimp or like fire ants on a cruise ship. Fire ants in a firehouse. Mm, yeah, def- definitely a mode of transportation. Well, if it, it's a houseboat. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they put fires out at sea. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's just a canoe. They just splash water. <laughs> yeah, they, they just tip you over and then tip you right back up. i think that's gonna do it for us i think that's gonna do it for us paula do you have an earnest moment for this week josh we have an earnest moment for this week we do (laughs) um so friend of the pod and amazing artist peter harris um who also Peter and I met, well, we met in college, but Peter was our art director of the newspaper, of the school newspaper. Mm. And oh, so the famed was, newspaper. The famed Manitou Messenger. And we would spend literally every single Wednesday night for years up in this newspaper office, like us and a couple other people till like two or three in the morning. Not, not doing anything about newspapers, just kind of talking. No, we were, yeah. I mean, it was like it was like a little of watch, a little of newspaper and a little of watching YouTube videos. <laughs> sure, multimedia. To this, day, to this day, some of the best YouTube videos I know are from Peter. But Peter is um an a, an incredible artist, like I said, and he um did a fundraiser where he made these incredible. Here, I have them here. I will show you uh, these incredible cat magnets. Well, those are so cute. Josh, do you want to describe them to our listeners? Yes. Um, these cats are definitely jellical. They are... Um, <laughs> the best thing a cat can be. Yes. Um, they are hand-painted, it looks like, um, in very beautiful pastel colors. Um, they're all smiling. They all seem to be living happy cat magnet lives. Happy cat magnet lives. Um, and so, uh, Peter made these and he raised a bunch of money for the Oregon food bank, which is wonderful. And he sent over this delightful note that says, um, thanks for spending joy and laughter with your podcast. Okay. Humble mm-hmm. brag. I decided to read that part out loud too. And I've included a couple of extra kittens to share with Josh. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. Isn't that that's incredible. So sweet? It's so sweet. So I'm like babysitting your your kitten magnets right now. Cool. Keep my cool cats and kittens safe, please. <laughs>
Uh, so thank you, Peter. These are so wonderful. And also everybody should follow Peter's uh, Instagram account to check out his art. And it's Peter Cat, fitting. Uh, it's P3TER Cat, C A T, on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for, I'm so excited to put these on my fridge or any other magnetized surface. Oh, thank you for tuning in for another of our mini sods. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you have a moment to rate or review, you can do that on Apple podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. That would mean a lot to us. Um, you can also find us on social media at being earnest pod pretty much everywhere, or you can email us, send us your earnest moments of the week for um, at being earnest pod at gmail.com. Thank you so much to Dylan Dutch for designing our wonderful theme song. You can follow Dylan on Twitter at, at Dylan Dutch. And thank you to Ryan Cruz for our beautiful logo. You can follow her on Instagram at, at RB Cruiser. But until next week, make sure that you buy your tickets for Madam Skaggs' Raccoon Circus. It's really, it's quite a treat. The reader gives it a 10 out of 10. (laughs) Thank you, everybody. Why not be?